Hey movie fans, today we're exploring the world of Lost Horizon, a film that's full of surprises. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions because this movie has it all from moments that will make you laugh to scenes that will shock you and others that might bring a tear to your eye. So stick around because there are plenty of interesting, long lasting and love facts coming your way. Lost Horizon isn't just any movie, it's a timeless classic that has lasted through the years. But what is it about this film that makes it such a symbol of the industry? Well, you're about to find out. Do you have a special memory associated with this movie? Maybe it's the first time you watched it with your family or how it made you feel as you got lost in its story. Whatever it is, we want to hear about it. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey like no other with Lost Horizon. You won't want to miss a minute of this unforgettable experience. In Frank Capra's 1937 film adaptation of James Hilton's novel, Lost Horizon, the narrative transports viewers into a realm where the protagonist, Robert Conway, along with four other main characters, finds themselves in an enigmatic utopia called Shangri-La after surviving a plane crash. Unlike Capra's usual focus on Everman characters, Lost Horizon shifts its spotlight onto this mystical sanctuary nestled amidst the Himalayas. The film explores the ambiguous nature of Shangri-La. Is it a heavenly paradise or a confining prison? As the story unfolds, viewers are left to ponder this existential question while marveling at the film's exquisite cinematography and compelling performances. Ronald Coleman's portrayal of Robert Conway, a former soldier and diplomat, anchors the narrative, guiding the audience through a journey of self-discovery and introspection. Despite some challenges, such as seven minutes of footage lost due to mishandling during reconstruction, Lost Horizon remains a cinematic gem, recognized by its nomination for an Academy Award for Best Picture and inclusion in the National Film Registry. Whether experiencing it for the first time or revisiting this timeless classic, audiences are sure to be captivated by its narrative depth and thematic resonance. A famous actor in the 1937 film, Thomas Mitchell starred in several movies that are well respected by the National Film Registry. He was in movies like Make Way for Tomorrow and Stagecoach. The making of the film itself took a long time, about 10 months, with breaks for other projects like Theodora Goes Wild. Edward Everett Horton was also in Lost Horizon and other famous films like Trouble in Paradise and Top Hat. Their roles in these movies show how important they were to film history. During the production of the film, a remarkable set known as the Lamissary was constructed, which stood as the largest single standing set in terms of square footage during the sound era of motion pictures. Situated on the Columbia Ranch in Burbank, the rear of the Lamissary faced the intersection of Verdugo Avenue and Hollywood Way, showcasing the grandeur of the set's design. Before the commencement of filming, several actors were considered for pivotal roles. John Howard underwent testing for his part just two days before production commenced. Notably, David Niven and Louis Hayward had also undergone auditions for the same role. Additionally, Rita Hayworth, a prominent actress of the time, tested for the role of Maria, a character eventually portrayed by Margot. The extensive preparations and meticulous casting choices underscored the commitment to bringing the vision of Lost Horizon to life, resulting in a cinematic experience that continues to captivate audiences to this day. In adaptations for the radio, Ronald Coleman reprised his role twice, once in 1941 for Lux Radio Theater, and again in 1946 for Academy Award Theater. The character Gloria, a sick young woman, was introduced solely for the film. In the original novel, her role was filled by Miss Brinklow, a missionary with aspirations of converting the natives of Shangri-La. This alteration in character dynamics adds depth to the film's narrative. Decades ago, when the film Lost Horizon was shortened for television, approximately 25 minutes of footage was removed, leaving a runtime of 107 minutes. UCLA attempted to reconstruct the film using the complete 123-minute soundtrack. However, much of the missing footage was in poor condition, so still images were used to fill in the gaps. Eventually, one minute of lost footage was located and restored showcasing Conway's meeting with the High Lama. This resulted in approximately 24 minutes of still images accompanied by the original soundtrack. During a test screening of the film in 1937, director Frank Capra faced challenges as the audience reacted with inappropriate laughter and numerous walkouts. Perplexed by this response, Capra spent two days contemplating the issue in Big Bear National Park. He decided to remove the first two reels, totaling about 20 minutes, and screen the edited version again. This time, the audience responded positively. Capra was relieved to have identified the problem and disposed of the excised footage by burning it. 
John Howard, an actor in Lost Horizon, has been featured in two films recognized by the National Film Registry for their cultural significance Lost Horizon and The Philadelphia Story. In Lost Horizon, the role of the paleontologist wasn't part of the original novel, but was added for Edward Everett Horton by Frank Capra. Horton improvised a scene where he is startled by a mirror in a lacquer box at Capra's request. Ronald Coleman recorded an audio version of the story in 1944 for Decca Records. Directed by George Wells with music by Victor Young, the recording closely followed James Hilton's original novel. Frank Capra's initial cut of the film was a lengthy six hours. The first public preview in Santa Barbara was cut short at 312 hours due to a negative reception. Following this, Capra immediately began reshooting and re-editing the film. Despite these challenges, Lost Horizon remains a notable piece of cinematic history. Ronald Coleman starred in three films recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural significance Lady Windermere's Fan, Lost Horizon, and The Prisoner of Zenda. Meanwhile, H.P. Warner appeared in nine Oscar Best Picture nominees, including Lost Horizon, and had scenes deleted from another film. The California State Censor Board required signed affidavits for a bathing scene in which a model doubled for Jane Wyatt, despite the model being bare-breasted, though not discernible in the long shot. It's fascinating how these details add layers to the production's history and context. The studio head wasn't pleased with Sam Jaff's portrayal of the High Lama. He insisted on reshooting scenes with a different actor, Walter Connolly. However, Connolly's test didn't impress, so Jaff reclaimed the role. Despite this, Jaff had to redo his scenes due to their lengthiness. Assistant director Andrew Martin revealed that footage of Ronald Coleman journeying through the Himalayas was taken from other films. Production faced an 18-month delay while waiting for Coleman's availability. In the movie, Lovett had a fossil bone that he said came from a megatherium, a huge sloth only found in South America. If it was really from Asia, it would have been a big deal, making people wonder about the ancient links between continents. Margot and Jane Wyatt's characters in the film were a mix of traits from the original novel, making them more interesting and adding depth to the story. The plot goes from 1935 to 1936, covering a chaotic time in history with changing beliefs and global tensions. Lost Horizon, in both the movie and book, has fascinated people with its themes of adventure, mystery, and searching for meaning in a world that's always changing. This timeless story still connects with audiences of all ages, making them think about human nature and the quest for utopia.